Person while tobacco here. A key to successful post-fire bush regeneration is knowing which plants are weeds and which are natives, particularly when they're still seedlings. But it can seem overwhelming. <coughs> do you pull it out and risk losing a native? Or do you leave it and risk letting a weed grow? The most obvious thing is the verbascum, which is a terrible weed. We have um, some oxalis and some um, bears ears here, a native broadleaf. It's almost always better to miss a few weeds than to mistakenly destroy regenerating natives, particularly ones that play important roles in the plant community or are rare or threatened species. This endangered vine here, this is Cynanchum elegans. It helps to tell yourself, if in doubt, don't pull it out, but do find out. Because if it's a serious weed, you'll want the chance to prioritise it. And even familiar plants might look quite different at seedling stage. So how do you find out? Yeah, it's very different on the back, isn't it? If you can, ask someone who knows. Find the local organisations with people who can help, such as Landcare, a council environment officer, Field Naturalists Club. Email them some photos. Post on plant identification sites such as iNaturalist or on Facebook. There are some apps for plant identification. And of course, many useful reference books. The range of plants that commonly regenerate after fire will vary with the geographic location and the plant community. Common weeds that often appear include fireweed. Look, these can spread really very quickly post fire. Fleabane. Cat's ear. A little one called inkweed. Oh yeah, inkweed. Yeah. And normally after fire there is lots of inkweed. And blackberry nightshade. Hopefully, there'll be a great variety of natives. There's a few groups that it's useful to get to know. Waterleaf the trees one. that are here were spotted gum and, and uh, black butt. Eucalypts. As tiny seedlings. Or older plants. Wattles. Some species have different leaf forms as they grow. Vine peas are common. Canadia down here loves a fire, loves a disturbance, will only last for a few years. And bush peas. There's some weed and native lookalikes to watch out for. Goodenia, they're all native. A hypercaris, yellow cat's ear. Native rosettes and flatweeds. India weed and farmer's friends. Star cucumber and morning glory. White cedar and balloon vine. Rainier and Senna. Comelina and Wandering Trad. Tremor and Lantana. Some are closely related. For example, the Nightshade and Daisy families have weeds and natives. Some natives can look pretty weedy, and people are often surprised that they're native. Two that regenerate strongly after fire are forest nightshade. The spines are actually quite soft. Kangaroo apple, is that yeah. right? That's what they're calling it, yeah. And kangaroo apple. Grasses can be tricky. 
There are many different native and weed grasses commonly regenerating after fire, and they look similar at a young stage. Two common natives are kangaroo grass and microlina. Two common weed grasses are African lovegrass. It's quite a bluey green leaf. I think of them as like a little kind of Christmas tree shape. And wild oats. We've got a blend here of poor dune vegetation, Seraphil peat, and little rainforest to the rear. Australia has a spectacular diversity of native plants. And now we've added a wide range of weeds. So don't expect it to all become clear too quickly. Some plants are distinctive, but others are difficult to identify even for people with experience. And new ones can appear after fire, adding to the plant ID challenge. This is the Hemodorum lily. But it's rewarding work and weedy burnt bushland really needs our help. So it's vital that we're willing to learn.